This particular collaboration today was something I was looking forward to for the longest of times, as I find myself being quite the big fan of this podcast, Theory of Improvement. So much so that I woke up at 2am here in South Africa to have a chat with these two guys. How many have I done? You did, you did like two pilot this episodes. Third. This is your third. So 50, 50%. And Brendan did two pilot episodes. He's done four. The third as well. Has he done four? He did yeah. pilot two, pilot three, and he did the... Because we did one all together. Yeah, the pilot three. So mm. one and two, uh, two and three. And then don't really remember after that. He did one with us with um, Theory of Improvement podcast. Oh, yeah. From Maryland yeah. and Utah. Thank you. Ted Priester and Carl Davis. Yep. They were really fun to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit sad that I missed out on that. It sounds like a good conversation. Oh, it was, it was the best, man. And yeah. like, yeah, we, uh, Brendan the was there. Boat. Brendan was barely there, man. It was like 2 a.m. in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, thank, thank goodness for that. Mm. It was a great chat. Well, without further ado, let's hop right into it. Roll intro. Season one, episode five. Um, all right. Well, you know, thank you guys so much for having me and Brendan. This is really exciting because um, this is our first collaboration after our pilot episodes. Yeah. And, and apart from like we're having to navigate our time zones to talk to you guys overseas as well. And like Carl, you're 15 hours, you know, behind on the, you know, on the east coast and um and Ted, like 17 hours. It was, I had to ask poor Brendan over here to get up at 2 a.m. in South Africa. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, like we're just discussing it's a university night as a student, 2 a.m. It's just another night. Nothing special <laughs> to it. <laughs> he was going to be up anyways, we he's trying to say, right? Yeah. Right, right. It's another night of grinding. <laughs> so, like, um, well, first of all, you guys, Carl and Ted, you guys are like, you know, across borders as well like your ones on the east coast ones towards the west coast um can you guys explain to me first of all how you became acquainted or where the story of you guys started and how it's turned into the theory of improvement podcast uh, you, you want to take, take this one <laughs> uh it's up to you you can say it if you want. go for it you you go ahead and do the the intro and i'll pick up wherever you i'll pick up on the stuff you missed <laughs> all right so Let's see. We met in college, so uh, we're both from Maryland, okay, uh, which is a state on, in the U.S. Um, we both attended Frostburg State University. I was a, I believe, I, I was a year ahead of you, right? So I was a sophomore when you were a freshman, right? Yeah, Tim? I think so. Yeah, I believe, I believe I was. Or either I was, we may, I, have, I think we might have started the same time. You just ended up. Um, I don't. It doesn't matter. First. We were around the same age in school. Yeah. And uh, through mutual friends, you wound up hanging out and everything. And uh, I don't know, we just stayed close. And mm. I feel like we, st- I feel like we, when we started the podcast, it was just like a, like we were picking up from college, like from our, from our, our friendship. But at the same time, we've both changed a lot, I feel like, in okay. terms of, of time from college. We've definitely matured a lot. And it was just something that for me specifically, I was passionate about talking about personal and professional development. And uh, I knew Ted had a, a very similar mindset. So I knew he was super busy too. So I was like, you know, I'll just ask him if he wanted to do it. So that's kind of how we started it. I actually, my, our first episode uh, was actually with another buddy of mine. Um, I started it with, and then he couldn't do it. He has four kids and he's oh. engaged. He's starting up his own business and everything. So he yeah. just didn't have time. And so I called Ted and I was like, Hey man, I know you're really busy, but if you really want to do this, um, I know he's really passionate about a lot of things and 
and I wanted to do it with him because he, I think he's very like-minded like me and he's very motivated too. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. So, well, I'll, you know, I was reading up about Zig Ziglar um, recently and he's got, he's got this quote, I'll read it back to you. He goes, you don't have to be great at something to start, but you have to start to be great at something. So like, exactly, you got to start somewhere guys. And absolutely, um, just, you know, to what you said um, about you guys being like-minded, you know, I think between myself, Brendan and Lee, we're all, you know, I, I, I believe in the people I work with. We're all on the same page and we're all equally as passionate. Um, and that's what you need. You need to, because it's not going to be easy half the time doing something, but um, if you're passionate about it, you know, I feel that just, that just makes up for everything else that comes with it. So awesome. Yes, a hundred percent. And, uh, we, we love Zig Ziglar. I specifically like Zig Ziglar a lot. Um, so my girlfriend's father, so Jess is my girlfriend, her father kind of introduced, um, us to Zig Ziglar. Okay. And, Cause he read a lot of Zig Ziglar and cause I like the book we're reading now is, I think it's, for, was, published in 76 originally so wow. it's not like it's new thoughts or ideas but it's just it's still applicable today you know yeah. and just like you said you know you can't you can't be good at something if you never start and so many people get this analysis paralysis where they're like well i could do this and what if i do this and they wind up never starting right and so uh, <laughs> i was actually talking to my buddy today because uh he came to the crossfit gym with me that I, we talk about sometimes on the podcast <clears throat> And I was like, wow, it's really great that you came because a lot of people, you know, say, oh, I should do that. And they just, they just never do anything. So yeah, I applauded him, right? I was like, that, that's good of you to put yourself outside of your comfort zone to try something new. So it's a good Zig Ziglar quote. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I, I didn't even know who he was before your, um, your podcast and your Instagram page and associating with you guys. And Zig Ziglar isn't a one-hit wonder either from what I can see. He's written, you know, about a dozen or so books over the span of his lifetime, which was from, you know, 1926 till nine, 2012 when he passed away. Exactly. Um, so definitely left, you know, a huge footprint. And, yeah, uh, if, if he was still alive, we'd probably be collecting royalties for how much yeah. we're <laughs> But yeah. we're giving him a free pass since, you know. I was going to say, you know, it, it's, um, I think it's going to be a little hard getting some monetization out of him now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We missed the boat on that. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys now started your second season now of your podcast. That's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really know how seasons work in podcasts. And like, yeah. it's, it's really funny because our podcast is called Theory of Improvement, right? And our podcast is uh, an improvement in itself, right? Like if you listen yeah. to, our first episodes compared to episodes now they're much different the way they're structured in a number of different ways and so for this specifically we're going to change it so drastically that we wanted to call a new season and advertise it as such so it wasn't to be so much and come so far that we just wanted to call it that you know so i don't know how they're actually supposed to be structured if there's a standardized way within the podcast world but we just liked it so yeah i some of the podcasts i've seen it's just season one episode 113 or something <laughs> right yeah they don't have a set structure like you were saying um yeah which is you know on our fourth episode now um we're still sort of working out what we want to do are we going to have so many episodes in this season and then and then work our way to the second um and then how many are going to have in the second and so on so we yeah it's, it's just um, making it up as we're going at this stage um which, yeah. is, which is fun. What do you what do you guys tip? I guess kind of do you have any ideas what you're gonna be I mean, do you just kind of catch up? Do you talk about anything in particular? Um, asking what your niche is gonna be with yeah. within your so, um with our niche. Um I've been talking to Brendan and Lee about this a lot. Um mm -hmm. I'm actually looking for us to start um associating and collaborating with um sort of like minded um individuals like ourselves and then let's talk about business sort of things and um, get together with business owners i know i know so many business owners in in my town alone that um i would like to obviously talk to them about what it's like being a business owner and the the recent struggles we've had with COVID. we're not a COVID podcast channel but it is very right. relevant 
Um, so our niche would be, you know, something on the um, philanthropy spectrum, the, the business world spectrum. Um, keep it entertaining. You know, we don't take ourselves seriously at all. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and obviously being in three different areas, um, we'd probably sell them, all three of us get together and interview someone. Maybe me and Brendan would take turns, me and Lee would take turns, just that sort of thing. Um, but, but yeah, like our biggest challenge that we're very excited about at this point is just our audio. Like you guys were talking in one of your episodes about how your audio has improved. We're yeah. trying to improve our audio since a lot of it's going to be happening over phone calls. So yeah, yeah our niche business, 100%. Um, I feel like that's, I mean, especially nowadays, that's, it's a great thing to get into, or it's a great, that's a, not to say it's an untapped market because a lot of people go towards that. But nowadays it seems like more than ever, people are getting away from your typical nine to five desk job. There's not, not a whole lot of factory workers anymore. Yeah. People work for themselves. They start their own businesses. It's, it's easier than ever, really. I mean, minus COVID, it kind of, put a dent in that, but it's, it's recently been easier than ever for people to build their own business or start their own thing. They, they don't just, you know, go into a desk job and stay there for the rest of their life, right? They invest their time and energy into something else. So, you know, with the three of you being in different parts of the world, there's three different communities that you guys all have access to, with three different groups of small businesses and markets that you can tap into and people that you can talk with. And that's three different, completely different areas where, you know, like you said, with COVID impacting those small businesses, you can see the different experiences in different parts of the world. So that, that's honestly kind of cool. And that's something that would definitely set you guys apart. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And, um, and yeah, look, um, it's, it's all about just not being afraid to ask the question. Like, hey, yeah. guys, do you, like, like with you, Pete, like you guys are five, Obviously, never met you before, never heard of you before, um, but I saw you guys and I thought, ask the question. It's as simple as saying, yeah. do you want to have a conversation right. and just have a microphone in the room? That's all a podcast is most of the time. Um, yeah, exactly. And I think like Ted was saying, it's a perfect storm for, uh, you know, for podcasts and that type of thinking in general, right? Because um, when, you, when you look at, you know, like baby boomer era, like World War II, right? People then... We're having kids literally to, you know, to support a farm, you know, the great depression, like people, like kids that grew up in the great depression had to like work, like to work to survive. Yeah. Right. And so you see a shift from that in, in middle-class where you're not just having to work on your farm all the time, or you're not, I mean, in some cases it is, but from our perspective in our lives, it's not right. Um, and so in, in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right. People, and within the workplace, they, they search for, you know, their basic needs be met first. Once their basic needs are met, they, they look for the next level of, you know, self-actualization or enlightenment. And I think with the resources to access so much information now, people try to gain that like much more often. And, and it's, and it's there too, right? Like, how do I make myself happier? Why do I feel sad? Why do I have to be at work all day, all, all day long, right? How yeah. do I get access to things that I want to live the life that I want to live like? Because, there are people that live great lives and, you, and people see them, they're like, wow, why shouldn't I be able to live like that? So, you know, people may, may listen into podcasts like ours or search for inf information along the same subject lines through a variety of different means. Um, but I think what's, what's, what was hardest for us in the beginning too is, so you have that, that like giant topic of like, personal and professional development. And this is something that we kind of had to narrow down to, right? So it's yeah. like for you guys, if you're talking about, um, so, okay, here's an example. So when we interviewed, um, what's his name? Joshua Arabu. So he's a YouTuber, right? And he, one of the things he told us how he gained so much publicity so quickly on YouTube is because how, how small his niche was, his mm. niche was, whatever you want to call it. So within the, the realm of like entrepreneurship, right? You have real estate. And then in real estate, you have, you know, real estate agents. And then within real estate agents, he's, you know, a young real estate agent in the state of Nebraska. So that's a very, very specific thing, right? So if I was searching for something along that area, he's the only one that has something like that. 
So I think something for you guys, if you're thinking about doing something based on entrepreneurship or development in some case, you know, using the things that using tools to your advantage, you have some, a person in, in a different country, you know, two different countries, you know, you could try to interview people across borders like you're doing now and, mm -hmm. and get their perspectives on an international level yeah, and see how the world really thinks about these topics on a global scale, not just within a certain market. Right. So I think that would be really cool. I was going to ask you guys, like, if you're Ted and Carl, if you guys are like you're baseball fans, NFL fans, uh, basketball. Yes, that's quite interesting for me because usually when I associate, if someone tells me, for example, a US city or state, and I start thinking about sports team I know because yeah. I'm kind of like the NBA. So I think now Utah and immediately rings a bell Utah, Utah jazz, uh, yeah. jazz naturally yeah. Yeah, but like exactly. Maryland like what sports teams are like standing <laughs> out <laughs> NFL wise Hold NBA on. NBA whatever it may be because I'm quite curious you got the so you got what are they called the Terrapins yeah there so yeah they're literally a football baseball and I think basketball team I might be wrong on the basketball side yeah so do you want I, no go ahead, Dad, go ahead all right so I guess you can correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. I don't know how you, like you say universities, we call them colleges. Yeah. Um, but colleges, college sports, especially in America, is a massive market. Yeah. So colleges, oh, yeah. especially big ones, will have sports teams for literally any sport they can. And the big ones, like University of Maryland, we call them, there's D1, D2, and D3. It's like the divisions that they're in. And D1 is the highest level. And so you'll have a lot of sports teams and there's universities in areas where there's not pro sports like NFL or NBA teams, right? Because they're, they might not be as heavily populated. So you got a, a large part of America that doesn't really have a hometown pro team. Mm. They have their local college or their university. And so they kind of rally around those sports programs like the Terps, for example, they have, you know, football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, like, all these different things, um, soccer, and, and basically they're all the, the Terps. They have the same name, but they just do different sports, and it's all the students that play. I know Maryland has a couple of nicknames as well, so they're called um, Little America, and this one this one will, goes out to Brendan. It's also called the Free State, which is a province in South Africa where he lives. I study actually, yes, yeah. it's free state. So yeah, <laughs> like my family stays in Cape Town and then the free state is because we don't have states, we have provinces. Yeah, right. And so the free state's a province then where I study. So yeah, it hits close to home there. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. So like Ted was saying, there's a lot of within the states, right? A state may have a specific team or city may have a specific team. Yeah. Um, NFL, and NBA, and then the MLB. So baseball, football, basketball, I probably say are arguably the three most popular uh, sport organizations, professional sport organizations. But and then um, if you don't have a local professional team in those three sports, a lot of times people fall upon, um, like you said, colleges, and sometimes other sports. So in Maryland specifically, lacrosse is a really big sport, just in the whole Northeast, um, which is a sport that was uh, created by Native Americans in America that um, we that common day people have changed to make it a little bit different, you know. Um, but it's, a, it's an awesome sport. And I love watching all types of sports. Mm -hmm. I think me nor Ted don't really watch a ton of sports anymore because we're just probably so busy. I know I'm super busy. And I know Ted is too. So, yeah, whenever yeah. I have free time, I like to, but that's usually just on the weekends. Yeah. Well, so, well, if you guys don't mind me asking, because I, I want to emphasize the busy, I think all the emails and direct messages I've received from you guys in the last couple of weeks, you, you emphasize busy. So, um, yeah. do you guys have any, um, like, do you have like a quote nine to fives going or any side hustles that's taken up your time? Um, what's, if you were to chart your day, um, what time would you allocate to which tasks? Ted, you go first. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Carl, Carl is the king of side hustles. So he'll, <laughs> he'll talk all day on that. Um, I, I don't, I don't really work a nine to five schedule. I work more of a five to nine schedule. Okay. My job, I'm, I'm, um, basically I work with people across the country over the phone. Um, I help people, um, finance their homes and like take care of debt, 
things like that. Um, so I work with people on the East Coast all the way over to the West Coast. And as we're experiencing right now, we're all in different areas. So we all have to talk at different times of the day, right? Mm -hmm. You got Brendan up at 2 a.m. over there in, in uh, Cape Town, right? Yeah. But just like that, some of my, the people that I work with, my clients, they're over in California. But other clients of mine are in Maryland or Florida or they're on the East Coast of the country. So I'll go into work most days around 8.30ish in the morning. Um, and then I'll, I won't leave a lot of nights until like nine, nine o'clock at night. Wow. So I'll, I'll spend most of my time. I get in and I manage other people at work that do the same job. So I, I have a couple different duties. Um, I spend some time recruiting for, you know, to, to build my team um, and to bring other people into the company. I spend time, um, you know, working with my own clients and also teaching and educating the, the newer employees on how to do the job, you know, and, and get better at it, how to have the conversations, how to actually do a mortgage for people. Um, and then sometimes, I mean, during the day more recently, I, I usually take at least an hour or an hour and a half and I exercise. So I'll get up in the morning recently, and a lot of this is due to Carl and I doing this podcast. I'll get up in the morning and I'll go for a run and then I'll have breakfast. I'll go to work. I'll work. You know, and then I'll have, I eat like, I eat at work for lunch and dinner just to save time because most of my income is commission based. So the more I work, the more money I can make. Um, and then usually in the afternoon, once I start to get a little tired, I ha I go to a gym across the street from my work and I'll work out, um, clean up, go back. And then I usually have meetings um, at work for a couple hours and then I'll finish the night off catching up on work that I didn't finish during the day. Then I come home and hang out with my wonderful fiance for a little while and then uh, do it all again the next day. That's usually Monday through Thursday. Um, it is pretty much the in by eight, out by eight or nine. Fridays, I'll usually leave a little bit earlier. I like to have dinner and stuff with, with Jamie, my fiance, on Friday nights. Saturdays, I typically work as well during the middle of the day because it, it kind of gives me a leg up and it, uh, I can kind of win by Monday if I have things set up from over the weekend. Um, and then Sundays are, are usually my free time to go grocery shopping, catch up on errands, clean up around the house, like, you know, take care of things, visit friends, family, stuff like that, or watch football, right? Because <laughs> that's every Sunday in America, at least through the fall. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, do you guys, so something I saw, especially on you guys' is Instagram, because now obviously I know you guys obviously have very busy schedules. Mm -hmm. And like I see you guys really enjoy um, working out. And I wanted to ask you, how important actually do you consider like exercise, not just in terms of fitness, but especially as such, you're very young, relatively young individuals working long hours, you know, doing side hustles and stuff like that. How important would you consider exercise? Like I said, not just physically, but like mentally right. as well. And what well, does it do for you as well? Like in terms of just keeping good mental health, I mean, right. especially in times it's like these. So, so important. It's when, when you're grinding all day long, you know, staring at a computer or talking to people or, you know, whatever you're doing, even if you really enjoy it, just exercise is kind of that reset button. And before we started doing this podcast, I mean, part of the reason I agreed to do this with Carl, I was so busy with work, um, but I knew that I kind of had to get out of a little bit of a rut that I was in. I wasn't exercising a lot. I was just kind of, I was going to work. I was grinding myself down and I needed to do something to kind of refresh and be a little bit more productive with my time. So still not dropping responsibilities at work, but just getting up a little bit earlier or carving out time in the day or just being more efficient because exercise is just so key. If you're so busy, you got to hit that mental reset and just being a little more physically fit helps you to kind of balance everything else. And Carl's even yeah. bigger on that than I am. Yeah. So, uh, for me, I, I a hundred percent agree with Ted, first of all. So for, I'll touch on the exercise piece and then I'll go over my routine. So, um, I, I actually use it as Zig Ziglar quote to, or a kind of a story to illustrate why it's so important. Right. So, in the segment we just read in our book, he talks about, um, in the segment we're reading right now, he's talking about your self-image and how, why that's so important, right? And he gives an example of a lady uh, lost her eyesight because of a rash she had, and she took a, me uh, a medicine that was supposed to clear the rash and settled in her eyes, and she went blind. 
and the settlement, they gave her a million dollars for her eyesight. And another lady was in an airplane. She got an airplane crash and she hurt her back so bad. She was paralyzed in the waist down. They gave her a million dollars for a settlement. And another lady, she was so famous for her legs in the, I think it was in the forties or the thirties. Um, and she actually had her legs insured for a million dollars. And one, and so if she would have damaged them, they would cost her, you know, a ton of money. Um, and he says, you know, you think any of these ladies would want to trade places with you? Would you rather have the million dollars, you know, would you rather be blind or would you rather be, um, you know, have a broken back or paralyzed or any of those things? And, and most human people are going to say no, right? They're going to say, I'd rather have my health. I'd rather be able to walk. I'd rather be able to see. And I think we have to realize sometimes, you know, a lot of times we do try to focus on making money, right? But at the end of the day, what I find really interesting too is, you know, so many people try to focus on retirement when they can relax and they can take care of themselves and they spend so much money on trying to recoup their health, which they lost all the time spending the money on. And Dalai Lama has a great quote on that too. But if your health is that important to you, then you should prioritize it that way, right? Because what doctors always say, like, how do you, you know, pretty much never get chronic diseases is diet and exercise. How do you not have things that lead to other things, diet and exercise, you know, like diet and exercise on the basis is going to help you the most. It's going to make you more resilient. It's going to make you literally feel better. It's going to make you more mobile. It's going to make you so many more things. And a lot of times people box themselves in a corner too with, with physical fitness. They just say, oh, I could never do that. Or, you know, they get these, they get these, uh, perceptions that they can't do something or that they're getting old, right? And I always tell people, you know, there's, there's people that are twice my age in the gym I go to that are way stronger than me, way more conditioned than me. And because they keep doing it, and if you don't use it, you lose it, right? You know, like if you, if you practice something, you'll, you'll stay proficient at it. And that's why I love fitness too, because it's something you can always progress in. And it's something that keeps you healthy. It's the best medicine that you could take, right? If I could give you a pill that could keep you healthy for the rest of your life, and it was fitness, like you would take it every day, right? This is going to keep me alive the longest. This is going to do the most benefit for me. So, and people know that they just don't want to apply it sometimes, or they don't prioritize it like they, they know that. So that's why it's so important to me. Also, because I'm in the military, it's also part of my job to, to stay a certain level of fit. Um, so I try to take that very seriously. And I try to um, be an embodiment of that. And just because I enjoy doing it. So, but for my routine, um, so every day me and Jess, uh, wake up about four fifteen, and we get ready to go to the gym by five, go to the gym from five to six shower at the gym, go to work from, uh, seven to four in the hour lunch break. I have, we, I usually either catch up on work, um, or I'll, I'll call Jess about our Airbnb that we have in, in Arizona because um, she manages that. Um, and then I will also, I'll read our book that we're reading. Um, and then after, after work at four, come back home, um, eat, try to do stuff with the dogs. Um, and then I've been doing, we've, me and Jess have been doing couch flipping for the past like five or six months now. And that's been pretty lucrative for us. So if we were to flip a couch, usually let's say we just sold one or dropped one off, it would just take us like maybe an, another hour. So, and then another hour to eat. So it's already at, you're already at like six or seven and we go try to go to bed by eight 30. Then we're also in a, a real estate class right now. Um, if we weren't in real estate class, we'd be taking regular full-time classes. Um, I take usually a class or two or semester cause I'm in college though. Cause I dropped out when I joined the military. Um, so, and then some days we record, you know, and sometimes I just, I just try to specifically take time because my schedule is so busy that it's, it, it is really important to relax, like Ted's saying. And that's why I try to designate like specific chunks of time to relax. Because if you do not, um, it can build up and stress can affect you in a really negative way. So I try to build that into my weeks. A lot of times I know some weeks are busier than others. So I just try to mitigate here and there, or whatever I can do. But like I said, you know, get off work at four, do as much as I can till 830, go back to sleep, wake up at it again. And then the weekends, usually it's wake up, try to do as many chores around the house or fix as many things or improve as many things. 
Um, I mentioned that Jessica runs our house that we purchased in Arizona right now as an Airbnb, but the house that we're currently living in, we're house hacking. So we, we rent our basement and then we live in our top unit, but we're looking to buy another house eventually and then rent both units to cash flow. So we try to improve things. We just had someone actually come and give us an estimate on uh, remodeling a part of our basement today, actually. Um, so we always trying to, you know, keep up the lawn or what can we improve here or what can we make better in the house there? And then, all, of course, you know, spend time with each other and our dogs, you know, take Abby and Sam to the dog park and do whatever and catch up with my parents and stuff, too. So every, you know, every hour for us all the time is is pretty packed. And so I really we do really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to do this with us at, you know, off time for you guys. But we are super, super packed. <laughs> oh, you can't you can't look up some YouTube videos and, and remodel your basement yourself. You're oh, yeah. Just, yeah, I'm going to be a plumber, an electrician and a framer all in the same hey, day. And, and that's <laughs> fine. It might take a couple of days, but, you, you know, you got to learn a new skill. It could be something positive. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, um, you know, thanks. Thanks for, for having us. And. You know, it's an equally um, a huge opportunity to be on your show as well. Um, and I'd like to thank Brendan as well for sacrificing his precious sleep to be here. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just phenomenal. No problem. Yeah, the game, the insight you guys have over there in the US. You know, we really appreciate it. Of course, man. Anything we do to help out? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. It was interesting getting to meet you guys and talk to and on kind of get a little bit of an understanding here how things work in different parts of the globe yep and we're excited to see you guys progress your podcast even further as well too